Yes, friends, welcome back uh, to the Antine Church. I am Christopher Manti. That is Christopher Anderson. Uh, you refer to us by our last names. That is no problem. We are fine with that. I've been called worse. Um, yeah, or, you know, just make up names. That's totally cool. Today today I was I was calling somebody about something uh, around the house, you know, and uh, like, who is this again? I said, Chris. Manti, Christopher Manti. Well, who do you have there? They said, "Oh, we just have Cree." Cree. <laughs> <laughs> That's me too. Okay, Cree. It is. Sounds like Marvel or something. Uh, anyway, how how are you feeling, Brother Anderson? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. Just enjoying some nice weather. Had some storms roll through earlier, so we're praying that nothing uh, comes through while we're all live streaming and kills power. But uh, by the looks of things, probably won't happen. <laughs> Good enough for me. Probably won't happen. That worked. Uh, that's the old marine mantra, right? Probably won't happen. But why? Why even bother worrying about it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's hot here. I don't know about. I mean, I guess especially in the Northwest. If you guys are in the Pacific uh, Northwest at all, you guys are really in, in the middle it's of it. A little it. unusual for up there. I was stationed there for two years, and I don't recall it getting that hot when I was there. Apparently, it hasn't been. Um, I saw like it's an all-time, you know, 150 year old record. Um, the way it is now. So, once, well, of course, you, how do you kid you know, look at news sites and you know they're exaggerating 99% of the time, but, um, with most in a millennium, you know, yeah, it's hot there. It's summer, I think we call it. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's about 100 here too. So, uh, blessings, Gene, North Carolina, uh, Isaac from the NYC, bless you, man. Uh, good friends on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or our website, which we, Highly encouraged because it's the most fun. I don't know about you, but I think it's fun. Uh, say hello and uh, who are you? And if you've been here before or never before, just that's cool. Let us know. Uh, we'd love to say hi to you and um, get to know you a little bit. And of course, you can take advantage of everything we've got there on our site, which includes the share button, most importantly. Because sharing sure is caring. Most important. Uh, and that it is caring, is it not? It's extremely important. Don't pass it. Don't well, scroll for Satan, all that stuff. Just sharing because it's caring. We like likes and we love loves. Do that too. Hit the give now button. If if you're encouraged tonight, if you learned something, if you love the worship, if you just feel the Holy Spirit tonight, ask him what you should give and do that. That is it. Praise God. Uh, hit the prayer uh, tab and that'll produce a form. You can fill it out. That'll come directly to us. Whatever prayer need you have or prayer request or intercession or just question for whoever or about whatever. Utilize that and we'll get it to you uh, from you and get back to you ASAP, right? Yep. And then the playlist button will get you the previous messages here for going back several months, which of awesome stuff. Um, mostly myself and Chris Anderson. But that's full of awesomeness from the Lord. And that goes all the way back if you go to our YouTube channel for three years now. Three years. It's a long time. A I think this is, yeah. This is at live stream number 50 on our current site. So it's been, you know, we've been out of here. We're getting pretty good at it, I think, pretty much. Well, let, let, let us know if you don't think it's any good. How about that? And we'll do our best. Uh, Chris, any luck in getting Charles Cooper? I uh, haven't reached out yet, Isaac. Uh, Charles Cooper is the author uh, I guess of several books, but um, what the heck is the name of it? Uh, shoot, I forget. Isaac will tell me in a second. Hey, uh, folks from Texas, excellent. Um, yeah, we, we endeavor to have guests as, uh, as well here. So um, if you have any that you'd like to hear from or maybe, you know, talk to, let us know. Be happy to do that. And um, praise God, man. Wait, we got some house cleaning to do, Chris. I know we do. Yeah, hey everybody out there, uh, part of the uh, Unsealed podcast Thursday. Oh, yeah, right. Two of Monday night's message. If you are, shoot us a message. Let us know. Yeah, that was pretty fun, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I had fun. Uh, it's always fun. Yeah, Chris Anderson was there. Uh, we did long form. It was like an hour plus. Um, an hour. Talking about uh, false prophecies and and what to expect and what's what's coming and even in the church today what passes for, you know, giftings of the Holy Spirit and, and abuse of that. We covered a whole lot of stuff. It was very, very good. 
uh, I thought. So let us know, if again, if you caught that, thank you for reminding me. Yeah. And we've got the app, of course, uh, which it's got to be the future, man. And one of these days, everyone's going to get on the same uh, the same page on this. We know, we know it's going to get tougher and tougher to spread the gospel uh, through traditional means, right? Uh, you know, social medias and, and uh, internet sites that are not owned by believers, which is most of them. Um, but if we've got an app that we've created, that we've, that we sustain, that we host that, right. Nobody else is getting your information. Use it, encourage you to use it and uh, get to just fellowship, get to worshiping, get to discipleship, get to meeting with other folks, having uh, anything we need to do basically, except dunk in some water for baptism. I figure uh, we can pretty much do it. Well, we can arrange uh, for that. That's not a problem. Chris will visit you in person. If there's and, a will, there's a way. We'll make it happen. <laughs> yes, that's true. Isn't there? Isn't that? Isn't that the truth? You can always find someone to baptize you. Um, anyways, yeah. So go get it. It's it's. There's no cost to it, and we love to serve you by having it. Uh, but at the same time, it does cost something to uh, own and to uh, keep it running. And so that is up right now. I believe we've got. Hang on, I've got an updated number. Uh, Four hundred and forty dollars. Uh, in on that, <clears throat> and it's apparently 150 more pending. I don't know about all that. I'm going to post a direct link um, sometime during the service here if you want to give towards the app itself. 2,500 total for the year, which some people say, "Oh my gosh!" Guess what, guys? Usually you're going to pay four times that. Um, I just I'm counting our blessings for the fact that we can we're still on this grandfathered um, a number because we were in right from the beginning. Um, ground floor with this company called Disciple. Anyways, uh, support that if you can, and uh, we sure would appreciate that. Uh, we'll also post some information if you want to be on our text list, if you want to be part of our Bible study on uh, the Telegram app, uh, all of that stuff. And last, 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 seriously, last call, if you're thinking about it, uh, gathering with us in person, just heard from someone today, actually, who's going to show up, which is awesome. Uh, Mary, right? Yeah. Next Friday night and Saturday, Rolling into Sunday, the 9th, 10th, 11th uh, at Iron Faith Fellowship locally. That's Pastor Randy's church uh, and where I serve as well. So uh, if you can make it out to the Philadelphia area, just however, just do it. Let us know. Let myself know. You can send me an email or whatever, a message. Um, let, just let us know you're, you'll be here so we can feed you. And uh, we're going to do what the Lord wills. Just good to be together, man, right? Oh, yeah. Brethren dwelling together in unity and all that stuff. That's right. Forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together, even more so as you see the day draw near. What day? The day of the Lord. That day. Amen. That day. So we see it drawing near, so let's get together. That's let's not it. forsake it. That's it. I just gotta let that's gotta let Chris go whenever I need help. He's got it. Picks it up. Um Tony Carr here has got a message or something on Facebook here. I'm sorry, not Facebook, YouTube. Yep. Uh definitely a lot there to unpack. And to be honest with you, um, that's that's probably about two or three messages all wrapped up in one. Yeah, so. that's a lot of stuff, Tone. Um, we'll see. Uh, I kind of doubt there'll be a lot of time left tonight because I got a lot more slides than I thought I'd have. Um, we're not going to do the whole book of Daniel. D- don't worry about that. Just kind of introducing it and then doing chapter one. But you never know, okay? If we don't get to it, come on back and we will do our best to address it. I know um, Chris and I and, and the folks enjoy it, so... We are willing, is the point. There's probably something out there on our app, some teaching somewhere. I'd, I'd be willing to bet you can find pretty much any answer to any of those questions. Probably two or three different ways to approach the answers, too. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. But right between the official like ETC uh, messages that we brought forth or something from Wings of the Eagle, which is my ministry, or Boot Camp Ministries, which is yours, or Stand Firm, which is Pastor Jake McCandless, somebody somewhere, somewhere that you – I pretty much guarantee we've touched on those things. Um, but no big deal. We could always revisit uh, as well. Uh, bless you, uh, Molly, from Minnesota and Greece. We've got Greece in the house. It's the first time that I think I recall seeing Greece. Love it. So welcome. Yes, sir. Met the Mediterranean represented. Absolutely beautiful. And then, of course, the foreign nation known as Minnesota. Love you as well. There, just teasing. God bless you as well. Yes. Uh, cool. 
All right. So this is what we do here. We say um, get together with fellow Christians from around the world, wherever you are at. It's a beautiful thing that we're not going to consign this technology to the devil, right? We can use it for uh, Christian purposes. So that's why we're here. Um, I think I touched on all the things we need to. All right. You so let's just start sign nor concede to the devil. Nor concede. Okay. Right. I'm not going to do that either. That's right. When the Marine speaks, I listen. That's all I know. <clears throat> yes or no, sir, I, sir. That's it. <laughs> I, 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 two eyes. That's that's the wrong branch. Okay. Anyways, um, I remember my dad. My dad was in the Navy. Sorry, personal anecdote. Uh, and he was um, on an aircraft carrier. He drove a PT boat. If anyone knows what that is, anyways, he would say uh, that when we went out in the aircraft carrier, we kept all the crazy blankety blanks under the ship. <laughs> Talking about the Marines, huh? Talking about the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> he said, if there was really a problem, we'd send them. Yeah. Uh, and let us out. That's all we got to do. That's it, man. Like sardines. Let, let them roll. Anyways, uh, praise God, man. Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Anderson, for uh, leading us in worship uh, again tonight. So let's do that and uh, pray ourselves into to God's word. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, so again, just welcome to service tonight. Um, the worship set tonight, and most of these songs are familiar. I think most of us would know these. And really, what I just felt impressed in my spirit uh, for the worship service is singing songs about the greatness of our God, the greatness of the Lord God, Jehovah, the greatness of Yeshua, his son. I'm going to try to do it without my glasses on so I don't get a wicked glare off of my eyes into the camera. So... Wherever you're tonight, at tonight, whatever you're doing, let's just use these next 10, 15 minutes of worship to just bless the Lord. Don't rely on me to worship for you. You need to, you need to worship where you're at as well. So let's bless the Lord tonight. I want to be close. Close to your side, so heaven is real, and death there's a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above, singing as one, hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am. Is worthy, none beside you, God Almighty, great I am. I want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world, hating the dark. I want to see dry bones living again, singing as one. Hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, great I am, who is worthy, come beside thee, God Almighty. Great I am The mountains shake before him The demons run and flee At the mention of the name King of majesty There is no power in hell Nor any who can stand Before the power and the presence of Great I am, the great I am, the great I am, you're the great I am, the great I am, the great I am, the great I am.
God Almighty, great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, great I am. Come on, somebody, you need to sing this tonight. Here we go. The mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee. That's the mention of the name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell, nor any who can stand before the power and the presence of Great I Am. Great I Am. Great I Am. The great I am, great I am, great I am, great I am, the great I am. Hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, great I am. God Almighty, great I am. I want to be close, close to your side. So heaven is real, and death there's a lie. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you, God. You give life, you give life, you are love, you bring light to a darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Sing that again. You give life. You are love. You bring light to our darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You are love. Bring light to a darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, only it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, only. Shout out his praise tonight. Oh, all the earth will shout. 
shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All over the earth this night, let's sing. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we only out. Great are you, Lord. Lord, we bless you tonight. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art. You are great. Blessings to you, Jesus. Sometimes our words 
fall terribly short. And all we can say, Jesus, I am so in love with you. So we're going to sing this tonight. You are God in heaven, and here I am on earth. So I let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. And I'll stand in awe of you. Yes, I'll stand in awe of you. And I'll let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. The simplest of all love songs I want to bring to you. So I let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. And I'll stand. Yes, I'll stand in all of you. And I'll let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. Jesus, I am so in love with you. Jesus, we just want to honor you tonight. We just want to bless you tonight. We just want to lift your name up and shout your praises from the top of a mountain, Lord. Lord, every one of us, no matter where we're at in this world, God, geographically or even just where we are at in life, Lord, you're there with us. You're omnipotent. You're omnipresent. You are everywhere. And even here in Ohio, God, your spirit is the same as it is in Greece and Ireland and England and Minnesota, South Carolina, Delaware, wherever else we may be gathering from across the world. Your spirit is, is there too. And Lord, I just pray that the worship that we offer to you tonight across the world was pleasing and acceptable unto you. Now, Father, I just want to lift up Lord Pastor Manti to you as he gets ready to bring the word. I ask, Father, that your word would go forth and accomplish the thing for which you have sent it, God, and that it would not return to you void. Father, I ask that we would have hearts to receive and understand, eyes to, to see and ears to hear, God, what you are trying to say to the church. Lord, there are many needs across the End time church tonight, God. There's needs with our friends Sarah and Todd who are in Jordan and dealing with a lot of issues regarding both work and where they're going to live and a lot of movement, a lot of a lot of confusion there, a lot of frustration there, Father. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just in this moment even just come and comfort Sarah and Todd, Lord, in, in these moments of just turmoil, Father, that you would bring peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, Taryn, tonight she's not feeling well. Lord, I, I speak anointing of healing over her and Brian tonight, quite frankly, Lord, her whole family. 
Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just move in power in that situation. Lord, there's brothers and sisters even here tonight with unspoken prayer requests or prayer requests that we just haven't heard yet, Lord, but you know the need, God, before we even leaves our mouth, before we utter it, God, you know the need. You know the need before it even became a need, God, because you've seen into the future and the present and the past you were there. And so, Lord, whatever those unspoken prayer requests are, whatever those unspoken needs are, Father, I ask that you just begin to move in those needs, Father, in those requests, God. Lord, I ask you to move not for our benefit, Lord, or anything like that, but that you may receive glory and honor in all these things. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters overseas, our, our affiliates our, our, that are a part of End Time Church in some way, shape, or form affiliated with what we're doing. Lord, I ask that you would bless their ministry, God. Bless their work, Lord. I ask, God, that you would begin to bring a harvest of souls into those ministries and even this ministry, Father, that all of us would not neglect the fact that we are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ first and foremost. And everything else that we do in ministry, whether teaching, whether serving, whether helping, whatever it may be that we're doing, God, that those things are for the purpose of leading people to the cross. And so, Lord, I ask that the harvest would begin to come in with these other ministries, these affiliate ministries of boot camp, of, uh, of End Time Church, and well, even boot camp ministries as well. Lord, I want to lift up Pastor Al in Kenya right now. It's lift up his daughter. Lord, he just sent a message shortly before we went on stating that his daughter is choking on a, on a bone. It's stuck in her throat from a fish that she ate, and she's in the, the hospital right now getting treated, Lord. And so, Lord, I ask for a quick healing and recovery of that, Lord, and that that bone would come out successfully, Lord. And, Lord, I just ask for the financial provisions to help them with that unexpected cost, Lord, unexpected medical emergency. And, Lord, tonight we just want to just honor you, God, in our words and our deeds, Lord, in our hearts. We just want to lift you up and bless you and worship you in spirit and in truth, God, for you are worthy of all of our praise. We just lift you up and bless you in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, friend. And thank you all so, so, so very much uh, for being here tonight and for giving uh, of your time, giving of your resources, uh, for being the church together. That's really what it's all about. So let's dive <clears throat> right into this tonight. I know folks are, uh, some of us are pretty excited. And to be completely truthful with you, um, I didn't know I was even doing this till this morning. Which is how it goes a lot of times, right? <clears throat> All right. Uh, so I sh probably don't need to tell you, but in case you don't know, uh, the book of Daniel is a very, very important work uh, that we need to make sure we are studying uh, often. Often it's not even long, which is a mercy, um, but it is so very important because the Lord Himself. As we're talking about the gospel being the most important thing. That's clearly a fact. One of the great ways uh, that we can witness and lead people to Jesus is fulfilled prophecy. And you can say, "Hey, look, God really is in control. God really is here." He really did send his son. He really does love you. And he really does want to live with you forever. That is the bottom line. And so use this uh, in your conversations this week and going forward. It's a powerful tool um, in evangelism if we use it um, the right way. All right. So let's take a look. At the book of Daniel, masculine, the masculine, um, maybe not a common uh, phrase to folks, but it's kind of a big deal in the Jewish culture from where this book comes from in the Old Testament. <clears throat> and so we're going to look at that real quick before we begin um, the book itself, okay? This is obviously the source material, right? Why does it matter to us as New Testament believers, as Christians? Why do we care? 
Well, there's this. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Understand. Then those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Matthew uh, 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Citations, right? So Jesus himself, as part of his testimony to us about what's, A, what's coming generally, but specifically about the days before he returns, this is the most um, stressed um, aspect of it, which is this major sign that comes from the book of Daniel called the abomination of desolation. And Jesus reiterates it, which means, obviously, it's not in the past. It did not clearly happen B.C., right? Uh, you can't uh, point to something in history and say this is the abomination. Um, it's clearly future to Jesus. And, it, again, if there was any confusion on the matter, it's impossible that it could have been 70 A.D. either, because these Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, etc., were not in wide circulation. They may not have even been compiled at all until after 70 A.D. So this is not a historical reference. It is in our future. All right. So that's why it matters to us. So what is this masculine? What is this about? Uh, we will see it in Daniel chapter 1 here tonight. Verse 4, or you also see it in 9.25, 11.33, 11.35, 12.3, and 12.10. Don't, don't worry. You can pause this, make notes. I hope your uh, note-taking is out, and we are going to share these slides on the End Time Church app later tonight or tomorrow morning. I would say by tomorrow morning, okay? So be on the lookout for that in the resources uh, sermon notes section of the app. All right, so not just uh, in Daniel is this an important issue, but the masculine means the wise, the wise, okay? Those with wisdom, those with understanding, etc. cetera. Um, there just happened to be in these um, uh, treatises, in these instructions on these last days from Jesus in the what we call the Olivet Discourse, okay? In other words, on the Mount of Olives, he gets this, great end time sermon uh, and in the book of revelation there are eight calls to wisdom or in other words to be a masculine um, throughout the olivet discourse matthew 24 for example verse 15 verse 45 and then matthew 25 verses 1 through 13 where it talks about the wise virgins Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, 10, 8 through 10, chapter 13, verse 10 and 18, and then uh, chapter 17, verse 9, all in their different um, ways. Call us to wisdom. Here is the mind with wisdom. Here is he who has wisdom. If you have wisdom, this. Read this in your churches. Okay? Etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So check those out uh, after tonight. Here's one thing I wanted to touch on that is really kind of cool. Um Daniel himself, of course, was a historical person, right? He was a prophet of Israel. Um, but his, his book really isn't that well thought of because it's so, I don't want to say prophetic, but that's, that's the truth. Um, it talks about things in the future in such details that it's maligned, right? It's, it couldn't possibly be true, couldn't possibly be right. Um, but Daniel really was... <laughs> a historical person, and in fact, he's referred to um, in the book of Ezekiel itself, which is kind of awesome. So let's, real quick, I'm going to read these passages to you here. Actually, let me read the, get my copy that I need. Okay, Ezekiel 14. So we're going to go back one book. Yes, I got pages turning. All right. Thank you. 14, 12 through 23 says this. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it. 
I will cut off its supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast from it. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they would only deliver themselves by their righteousness, says the Lord God. Isn't that interesting? Throws in Job and Noah. Okay, definitely examples of, you know, wise old people from the scriptures, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years before Ezekiel's time. But then he throws in a contemporary. Daniel and Ezekiel were of the same age group. They knew each other. Certainly Ezekiel knew about him. And they both uh, were in the land of Babylon during the captivity of Judah. Okay, let's continue. And if I if I cause wild beasts to pass through the land, beasts pass through the land, famine and then beasts, and they empty it and make it so desolate that no man may pass through it because of the beasts, even though these three men were in it, the who are the three men? Noah, Job, and Daniel. As I lived as the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, only they would deliver themselves, and the land would be desolate. Desolation of the land of Israel. Or if I bring a sword on that land and say, sword, go through the land, and I cut off man and beast from it. Even though these three men were in it, Noah, Job, and Daniel, as I live, says the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, but only they themselves would be delivered. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury on it in blood and cut off from it man and beast, even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would deliver only themselves by their righteousness. For thus says the Lord God, how much more it shall be when I send my four severe judgments on Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the wild beasts, and the pestilences. Pestilence. To cut off man and beast from it. That's Revelation 6. Yet behold, four horsemen, basically, right? Behold, there shall be left in it, the land of Israel, a remnant who will be brought out. Both sons and daughters, surely they will come out to you, and you will see their ways and their doings. Then you will be comforted concerning the disaster that I have brought upon Jerusalem, all that I have brought upon it. And they will comfort you, they who, those who will meet you there, who bring you out. Comfort you when you see their ways and their doings, and you shall know that I have done nothing without cause that I have done in it, says the Lord God. What a what an interesting place to insert Daniel. It talks about four judgments against Jerusalem. It talks about the land. It talks about leaving the land. A remnant will be left, and they will leave, and they will be comforted by those who take them. Whoa! It's kind of like Jesus said, when you see this, get out of Judea, flee to the mountains. Uh, the point is, Daniel was already famous by the time Ezekiel 14 was written. Famous for his wisdom. Even before he was taken to Babylon. So there's something about him, right? Okay, let's look at Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. And again, you, this might have an, an application that you might remember. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre. Uh, see Matthew 11, Luke 10, by the way. Thus is the Lord God, because your heart, who is the prince of Tyre? Probably the Antichrist. Because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a God, I sit in the seat of the gods in the midst of the seas yet you are a man and not a god though you set your heart as the heart of a god behold you are wiser than daniel or some translations say you believe yourself to be wiser than daniel 
There is no secret that can be hidden from you. That's the wisdom of Daniel is that he knows secret things. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself. Again, talking to this Prince of Tyre, Antichrist person. And gathered gold and silver to your treasuries by your great wisdom in trade. You have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. And I read that to understand that to mean the armies of heaven. And they will draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit and you shall die. The death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Will you still say before him who slays you, I am a God? We know that Jesus slays him. But you shall be a man and not a God in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. John 18, 36, etc. Daniel, before Daniel was written, Daniel's been talked about. Daniel, here's the... Um, Theory? Bad way to say it. Daniel and his three companions, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, are the prototypical masculine. It's the uh, suggestion tonight. Daniel 1 to 6, remember Daniel is 12 chapters long, so I'm looking at it and saying Daniel 1 through 6 is actually foreshadowing the end time wise virgins. They're for us, Proto the prototype, right? The prototype, the originals, uh, for the purpose of foreshadowing. Book of Daniel is literally bookended by the masculine message. Beginning in chapter 1, again, like we saw uh, here in the second chapter 1, we'll mention it. And then the first six chapters being the prototype, and then the ending, the ending of the book, the book end, okay? In chapters 11 and 12, mention it four more times. And it's representative of the second half of the book, which is major part of the visions, etc., of Daniel 7 to 12, the descendants, not the prototypes of the masculine, but the descendants, the, the um, conclusion, the ones who... It applies two and four. In fact, Daniel himself is exhorted to be a masculine when he is given the 70 weeks prophecy, which is what Jesus uh, would later refer us back to. Right? When you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel. So in this future fact of it, 70 weeks are determined for your people and your holy city, the Jews in Jerusalem, to finish transgression, make an end of sin, make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and prophecy, to anoint the most holy place, the holy place where the abomination will sit. It can't be anointed or cleansed until... That time is over. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be 62 weeks, seven weeks the street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times, after 62 weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. The people of the Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's the abomination, not history. The end of it shall be with a flood and till the end of the war, desolations are determined. So this is what Daniel is told to be a masculine about. You are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand. Giving you skill to understand. Okay, so that's the context of the great vision, which is what Jesus is referring us to. All right, what is this masculine? Where does this come from anyway? The, the word masculine is, is newer than the biblical Hebrew. 
uh, but the word that keeps coming up in Daniel is sh- shachal, okay, shachal, and if you do a shachalim, right, that's more than one, a shachalim is wise person, a wise people, the wise, uh, I'm just assuming the mah is a, a later uh, Hebrew consonant there, but that's where it comes from, the shachal, okay, the wise, the gifted in all wisdom, they who understand, they who understand, Point is, the wise virgins or wise servants must know the words of Daniel, and that is why we need to go back to the uh, sermon of Jesus on this topic in Matthew 24 and 25, where he talks about he who has wisdom, he who is the wise servant. What does the wise servant do? Look at the end of Matthew 24. The wise virgins versus the unwise or foolish virgins. What does the wise Virgin to Matthew 25. All right, so let's take a look at Daniel itself. The text, finally. (laughs) Okay. Daniel chapter 1. In the third year, notice... Line up, synchronize. Okay. In the third year, the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, or Babylonia, to the house of his God. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish, good-looking, gifted in all wisdom. This phrase, gifted in all wisdom, here I'm reading the New King James, uh, gifted in all wisdoms is that masculine term. Possessing knowledge, quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace, whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. So they brought them there to mm, culturize them, okay? Give, make them Babylonian nobles, basically, you know, since they were so great and wise and had secret knowledge and they wanted to teach them Babylonian stuff and make them into Babylonian leaders who, you know, hey, we treat the Jews good. Look at what we've done with these guys. Um, And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank. So this is the king's own food, right? He's, he's, his mind, he's treating him very well. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, and of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Three years training, and at the end of that time to serve the king. I, guys, I, I just want to stress um, you know how the Holy Spirit works, right? I mean, we see him when he writes the scriptures um, how many levels or how deep it can be. And I don't want to present some kind of like, you know, mysterious, um, you know, you've got to be some kind of super believer to understand it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's hidden in plain sight. A lot of these details. Right. And Daniel is, as it says in chapter nine, he says, you're a, you're a man greatly beloved. When Gabriel visits him. Um.
he gets singled out. And like we read in Ezekiel and like uh, we're seeing with the respect that he's garnering from the, basically the most powerful man in the world, Nebuchadnezzar at that time. Um, there's something about him and there's something about, and of course this is all credit to the Lord. The fact that he loves God, the fact that he listens uh, to his father, that he's sensitive to the Holy Spirit, that he knows the scriptures. This is why God trusts him. And he's going to tell him a lot. All right. So this is part of it. When I see serve three years at the end of that time, then the king, you know, you serve the king. That's important to me. That's encouraging to me. Just as a as a nobody Gentile uh, Christian, you know, 2,500 years after this was written. All right, let's continue. Now from among those are the sons of Judah. So let's not mix it up here. These are all Jews. Daniel was one of them. Or Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those were their Hebrew names, right? To them, the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. So he changed their names to Chaldean or Babylonian names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, I call this act of resistance number one. So he's, they're putting themselves out on a limb with this. They're being treated well. This is not like a normal prisoner. They're getting the best food in the kingdom. And they're saying, no, I don't want it. Because we serve a higher God, right? A higher king. And this plan may not have worked, okay? They were will, the point is they were willing to die. This act of resistance um, meant that they were willing to give up their life right off the bat for the Lord. Now God, verse 9, um, I put a note in here, hang on, Psalm 141.4. Let's take a look at that real quick. Maybe I should just put it on the screen instead of flipping. Psalm 141.4. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. That's Psalm 141. So possibly Daniel is actually has you know that scripture in mind uh, in this uh, resistance. Okay. Um, now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your food and drink. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to get killed by boss when I tell him you won't eat his stuff. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would engender my head before the king. In other words, you're going to cause me to get beheaded because you're going to look malnourished because you're not eating the good food. By the way, whereas beheading is also uh, threatened in Revelation 20 verse 4 uh, against uh, believers who won't bow to the beast, right? And it probably has something to do with eating, not being able to buy or sell. All that ties in. So Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for ten days and let them give us vegetables to eat. And water to drink, then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So we consented with them in this matter and tested them ten days. So he's saying, uh, yeah, give us, we only want veggies and water. 
and you guys can eat all the rich foods that the king has given you, and we're going to show you that we're going to be just as healthy, look just as good. So he's really relying on God here. I mean, we're, I'm all about, ve- you know, vegetarians, but it's hard to get fat. It look look really healthy from vegetables. All right. Um, uh, what is this ten day period? Why that seems kind of random. Obviously, nothing with God is random, but isn't it? It's just kind of like out of nowhere. Well, obviously, Revelation chapter two, uh, verse ten. You have again a ten day period. It says you will be you have tribulation or trouble for ten days. It throws some of you into prison for ten days. Daniel is, it doesn't really seem like it, but kind of, he's in, kind of in prison. Um, being tested. Right? I also have, uh, as a note, Jeremiah 42 7. Let's take a look at that. Uh, Jeremiah 42 7. And it happened that after 10 days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And this is in the middle of uh, an ordeal. There as well. Anyway, it's just something fun to look at. Um, so they're eating less healthy, less calories, but they're going to look better and fatter. That's what the deal is. Again, God is being put on display here, right? He's really, really being leaned on by Daniel and the boys. And at the uh, verse fifteen, and at the end of ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus, the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge. Like Acts chapter 7. And skill in all literature and wisdom. It was not common to be literate, by the way. Okay, so they, in other words, I think this means they knew multiple languages now. Uh, They knew the classics uh, works um, and they knew things that most people didn't. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. That's going to come in handy. Now, at the end of the days, meaning what? Three years later. This went on for three years. Now, at the end of the days, when the ki- why did I say three years later? Because of the previous verse. Verse 5. It said it would last for three years. At the end of those days, when the king had said they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, not just these four, but all these men of Judah and the young men who they brought in, among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus, which would be the last days of Babylon. This probably means this is when he died. Um, so we have 10 days turned into 10 times better. And I'm, I just go to the parable of the Lord that actually I, uh, went, came to my mind during uh, the prayer time with Pastor Anderson, um, which is those who hear the word, receive it, and have a good soil, and it can grow and produce fruit. Some 60-fold, some 100-fold, right? 10-fold. 10 times better. And this term astrologer, some some, one translation that I saw rendered it magi. The magi. um, That's possible, actually. Um, We all know the magi who visited Jesus, right, in the New Testament when he was born. The quote-unquote wise men, the one with wisdom, from probably Persia, which is right next door to Babylon, right? Anyway, just a, an aside that you might find intriguing. Um, 
So we've got all the way up from the time that uh, Nebuchadnezzar invaded uh, Jerusalem and took all the stuff back with him. Um, until the end of his reign. The end of Babylon, in fact. Not just Nebuchadnezzar, but his um, family who took over and then uh, into the Persian Empire themselves, which is what, again, Daniel was told. This is the main prophecy, the main vision that he had, um, or main details, which was Daniel 9. And all of the visions fit into that. Uh, this last seven-year period. So it's very, very um, important that we have this foundation. Okay? So that is Daniel chapter 1, and I think we'll give it a wrap right there. What do you say? All right. Praise God, guys. Um, it's a good place to start, and um, we're going to pick up a chapter 2 here, Lord willing. Next time, whenever that is. Okay. Uh, and we, I do intend to go through the whole book. And of course, um, chapter two gives us the um, great statue image, um, dream and interpretation and, and kingdoms and all that fun stuff that we all want to know about. So we'll do that next time. Okay. Um, let's see if there's any questions or comments or whatever, or we just want to wrap up for the night. Um, thank you, Adriana, David, um, uh, turn says I can get fatter on veggies, potatoes. That is, that is true. Taters, potatoes, those work to fatten us up, don't they? Um, okay. Let's see. Scrolling up through YouTube and Facebook. See what we got here. Um, I'm talking about the son of perdition, Barbie says. Um, you're talking about the Antichrist, the son of uh, Prince of Tyre, uh, one who invades Jerusalem, the abomination of desolation, son of perdition. Yep, all the same guy, definitely. Um, and of course, we've got it's a good Phyllis with the Proverbs 120 wisdom cries in the streets. Yes, indeed, she does. Um, Yeah, foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, yeah, Gene's talking about my comment in the beginning. Um, chapters one through six, with the, it's the historical account of Daniel and his friends, um, what they went through, and those are our, our examples. Like Hebrews would say, those are our examples for us, but specifically to be these ones of wisdom or the masculine, the wise virgins, the wise servants. Um, who are ready for the return of the king in those days. Daniel is very specifically keyed uh, and prepared for the last generation. Now, whether that's right this second or 10 years from now or our children's generation, um, it really, really behooves us, doesn't it, to know what it says. Even if we don't have full understanding, know what it says. I'd be able to teach it because um, it is pretty near, it seems to me. Um, Barbie, what happens to the Israelites and Jewish people and Christians here in the USA during the end of days? Well, um, short answer is I believe the Jews will be uh, fished back to Israel itself, um, God will be doing that work in one way or the other. And then uh, we as believers have a role when the, that tribulation actually kicks off. And even before that, that last seven year period, we have a role as the church. That's why I wrote this called Flee to the Mountains. Okay, that's the scripture that we covered first. The church's responsibility to Israel in the final seven years of the age. All right, if you want that, go to Flee to the Mountains book. Uh, com. Actually, if you want it for free, uh, there's a course that goes along with it, fleetofthemountainscourse.com. I'll send you the book for free. It's important that we know it. Um, that's the role of the church, okay? Uh, 
Dan, right, exactly. The prototype, Daniel's the manual for the entire church. Yeah, I mean, that's that's it. That's it, Gene. That's You could just say, you know, I could just say that, but a lot of folks, so you need more than, I need more than that. I need more evidence than just say that. But that's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, there's Daniel is our manual for whatever the end time church is, whether it's right this second or a couple of years down the road. Daniel was written for them. Um, and hallelujah, indeed, Jojo. Um, you know, this is really important stuff. I, I can't go vegan. I'm sorry. I did not mean to to hit that comment. Uh, there was something, yeah, this one, about cupcakes. Well, bless your son, Molly. It says Molly and David. Is that the two of you or is that one person? I'm sorry. Uh, but, but they are awesome at that age. Treasure. Happy birthday, my man. Uh, and look at you being super cool parent getting custom cupcakes. I, I just went, to, you know, I walked to the corner store and grabbed some. Uh, God showed them favor when they appealed not to eat the king's food. He knew their hearts and honored them. That's very possible. Well, clearly that's the case, right? He did. He did honor them um, because of their faith there. Um. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, I do I do have a few books in my library. This is not the real one, okay? Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. Live it up. Ten's a good age. My youngest son is 11, so I know what it's like. Um, well, you can have my book, Molly. Um, if you having trouble the normal ways, just shoot me a message and we'll get it to you. Christopher at endtime.church. That'd be awesome. All right. Um, here we go. Going back to the end time church page. Um, uh, let's pull that up. Oh boy. We got a lot of stuff in here. I see things about cheese whiz. Uh, there's the potatoes. Okay. Um, having water problems. Oh no. Sorry, David. We'll see our Jewish friends make alia. That's what Jeff said. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to get at earlier. Right? They're gonna. I, I really believe God is gonna work that. Um, into reality because look at it this way if there is a um, peace deal right a, the, the long awaited Middle East peace deal and and Israel and all the surrounding nations now have got together and, and all the Muslim nations actually have come and agree that we will not attack and and uh, we, we meet at this time because we have a, um, a leadership structure in place with these ten kings and we have this one representative is that is going to you know, um, uh, hash the details out. So the, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and the whole thing is going to be settled. And they do, they settle it. For the first half of that seven years, for that three and a half years in the beginning, it'll be very good for Israel. Very good and very safe. It says to the point where in Ezekiel uh, 37 or 38, a land of unwalled villages, right? So they're not even pre- defending them, their cities anymore. They're so comfortable. Um, that is a great draw for for not just tourism, but for uh, citizens, right? For all the Jews in the world. Hey, look how safe it is. Come on back. I think it'll be um, a lot of a lot of them will take them up on it. Okay. All right. Um, whole synagogues in the U.S. will take flight. That's possible. Very possible, Jeff. Um, Kim, when Peter said two days, do you believe that is 2,000 years? Um, 
Do you believe that 2,000 years meaning are we in the end of the last days? I'm sorry, the, the scroll keeps moving on me. I can't be able to go up here. Uh, do you believe that the Lord will return in our lifetime? Well, you're referring to, uh, in Peter, where it says a day of the Lord is, is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Um, I do think that's, again, one of these uh, clues that we can take away that, yes, it's exactly what it means. So the day of the Lord is a thousand years long, uh, hence the um, Revelation 20 revelation of that is that when Jesus is ruling from Jerusalem over uh still a fleshly Israel and world uh, with the resurrected people around, um, that, that period is a thousand years long. Yes. Uh, are you talking about Hosea chapter 6 uh, when it says there are two days and then on the third day there's a resurrection and revival and you will, you'll return to us again, that stuff? That, there's something to that also, um, I think. And um, I actually did a uh podcast or web show about it about it was last year sometime end of end of the year maybe eight nine months ago um if you look at the wing of wings of the eagle youtube channel you'll find that if not i'll get i'll try to link it to you kim but yeah i believe there's something to it so if 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 we're on a you know a general time frame of you know the the resurrection or the crucifixion time, um, they're starting a 2,000 year period from that time, then we're getting pretty near, right? That's about, now we're talking about 10 or 12 years from that time till now. Any way you slice it, it's kind of close. Now, we don't want to be dogmatic. I'm not dogmatic about it. I'll never say, yes, this is the way it is, and this is definitely happening. I don't have some kind of you know, prophetic vision or something like that. I'm just going in the scriptures, but it could be that that's a that's a valid thing. And pretty soon we're going to see if it's valid or not, because if that comes and goes, then we know it was not. Um, cupcake storage. Uh, okay. Uh, one of my best friends is a convert to Judaism. Jeff says. She and her significant other will be among the Jews who make Aliyah. Well, if you already know that, then there you go. There's a good example from it. Um, you're welcome. Um... Okay, I'm going to try this one, but I probably shouldn't because it's already 920. Um, why, did, why did in Daniel it says the time of the end was for many days, right? Um, and 500 years before Christ came. And I'm sorry, the scroll has killed me here. Uh, before Christ came in, the temple would be destroyed. Okay, yet in Revelation it says the time is soon at hand, even at the door. Ooh, it says the time is near. Jesus says it's at the door when you see these signs. So let's not conflate the scriptures. Um, and we take that to mean 2,000 plus years, honest question. Yeah, uh, where it says in Revelation 1 and, and, and then at the end of the book where it says the time is near, you know, take heed, make sure you read this book aloud, things of that nature. Um, I mean, if you see, I've, I have a whole course called The End Times for Beginners. We have a whole module on Revelation where we go into chapter 1 and dive into statements like that and the day of the Lord and I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Um, things like that are very important to parse correctly basically what i understand um, on that is kevin is once these things begin they will happen very fast so that once you see these things in this book begin to occur it'll happen fast it's not going to drag out that's my understanding of it um okay keep going keep going i can't keep going i'm no robot uh, okay, I'm back to Facebook and YouTube. 
Um, what's the email again, Molly? Christopher at endtime.church. Also, Christopher at wingsoftheeagle.com. They both work. Um, from the fire to the frying pan. Oh, you're t- that's Art Cat, Sessie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're talking about the Jews um, being terrorized, basically, you know, in the their nations currently, and um, going to Israel might seem like a good idea until you know the Antichrist invades, and then it'll really be a problem. Um, obviously, I I agree with that, but um, if they are listening to those of us who are speaking. <laughs> they might be okay. There might be that remnant that escapes, right? That's the one thing we pray for. And we can help them. And, and like Jesus says in Matthew 25, we clothe them and feed them and visit them uh, as if it were him himself. And then some of them will come through the fire and will call for him. And that's what he needs to hear. All right, boy, do you guys do want me to hang out? Uh, it's Selma, oh, love it. Can a Catholic reach heaven? Of course. Are they born again? Uh, that's my honest, flippant answer for any uh, denomination. If you're born again, you're you're in. You're in. If you're not, you're not. And I'll, any look. You pick your denomination, Catholic, uh, Orthodox, Lutheran, you know, any of the evangelical churches here, Baptists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, non-denominational, whatever. God only looks at one question. Are you born again or not? There are born again believers in every denomination of Christianity in the world. I guarantee it. There are also those who are not born again yet are in those same denominations and maybe who go to church faithfully or, you know, do some kind of Christian work um, but are not saved. It's all about are you born again? That's it. So, yes, you can be a Catholic and be born again. Therefore, go to heaven. Amen. Amen, Phyllis. If you know, shout it, right? That's what we got to do. Um, what is Elijah? Elijah Rock. Sounds cool. What's your opinion about the daughters of Babylon? Do you mean the, the that phrase, the virgin daughters of Babylon? What is that, Isaiah? Hang on, let me look it up now. Oh, the Psalms, right? Let's see. Daughter... Psalm 137 and Isaiah 47. Hey. All right, brain. O daughter Babylon, who are to be destroyed. Happy are the one, happy the one who repays you as you have served us. That's Psalm 137, 8. And Isaiah 47, 1 says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. Without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called tender and delicate. And also Jeremiah 50 and 51. Okay. And Zechariah 2. Up Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. All right, there's a lot of good crunchy stuff in there. Um, That's a, that's like a whole Bible study. I'm sorry. I, I'm not I'm not comfortable in addressing that right now. <laughs> um. It could be a reference to Mystery Babylon, right? So it's not actual Babylon, it's the descendants, the daughters, the um, the ones in the future, even Mystery Babylon, mother of harlots. So it's a, it's a um, feminine um, reference. Does that make sense? Hope that helps. <sighs> um... And uh, Elijah says Jeremiah. Yeah, that's that's one of them too. For Jeremiah 50, 51, 50 verse 42 and 51 verse 33. 
Yeah, but I, I figure they're all talking about the same thing. Okay. All right, guys. Oh, wait, there's more now. Hang on. This is the, this is the end. I swear this is it. Uh, Jesus doesn't care about your denominations. Amen, Jeffrey. They all get dissolved at the rapture. Yeah, that's good. Praise God. Uh, David and Goliath, picture of Armageddon. Kind of. Only, you know, little little David, the Jews, are going to be helped by King Jesus, uh, who splits the sky. Uh, so not exactly like that, but maybe in the beginning of that day of the Lord, right? Um. Yeah. All right. Praise God. We're out of here, guys. Thank you so much for your kind attention and participation. And please, if this has blessed you in any way, if you've learned anything at all, ask the Lord how much you should give, because we wouldn't be here without your offerings. And that's that's a that's just a fact. It's the truth. Um. You know, we've got the vision to do this thing, and up till the vast majority of it has just been a lot of faith and a lot of, you know, um, well, I guess this is going to work somehow. <laughs> you know, there's no big support from anywhere. There's no denomination behind us. There's no big church project or anything like that. Uh, this is just the leading of the Holy Spirit. So if if you've been blessed by it, please bless it in return. Uh, go to endtime.church slash, slash give. You can give uh, any way. I think even, I think even uh, crypto, pretty sure is on there. So, however you want is awesome. So, bless you for that. Until next time, Lord willing, uh, we'll be back. Oh, Matt, my my brother Matt's made a good point here. Looks like denominational lines will begin to disappear once the church is forced underground worldwide. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Right? Hey, let's I'm looking forward to that. I think Matt's right. Imagine all of a sudden where you have to be underground, you know, quote unquote, or maybe literally, uh, to be a believer, to have church, to do things like this. It has to be um all of a sudden all those traditions and all these these little hatreds that we have for the way we each other do things are gonna just float away. They're really gonna just disappear. Um, either you're born again or you're not. Either you serve Jesus or you don't. Either you love God with the whole heart, mind, and soul, and you love your neighbor as yourself, or you don't. It's going to be very clear. A lot of stark contrast between, um, you know, the church and the phonies. Uh, those are just going along for the social club or whatever. All right, guys. That's it. Love you so much. Until next time, Pastor Manti for... Pastor Anderson and Tyrannosaurus and all our awesome folks here. We love you so much. Please reach out to us if you have any issues whatsoever. And um, again, Lord willing, see you next time. Chapter 2, Book of Daniel.